Hello everyone, welcome to the Adapted Toys for Children Spring Callout of 2021. Uh, this is our second semester going fully virtually. Um, just got a quick question asking if you fill out the Google form. No, you don't. It's totally fine. Uh, I'll have one at the end of, we'll have one at the end of the thing if you want to become a member. Um, but yeah, this is our second semester fully online. Uh, last semester went really well in terms of its new structure. Hopefully the new members like it and the old members will get to see some of the changes that we hope to make it better. Um, but yeah, I have a good feeling about this semester. Hopefully things work out. All right, so our team. Uh, so I'll go first, I guess. My name is Cooper. I am the president of Adaptive Choice of Children. I'm basically my second year of president. I am a junior in mechanical engineering and my pronouns are he slash him. My name is Madison. I'm the vice president. This is my second semester as vice president and I'm in biomedical engineering, um, but I'm currently off campus on a co-op right now. Uh, hi there, my name is Andre. I'm also a junior in Compi. Um, I joined about the same time as Cooper, so I'm also, this is going to be my second year as a treasurer. And, uh, yep. And uh, Kate, our secretary, said they couldn't be here tonight. Uh, they had a class that was only on, that's on Tuesdays and Thursdays, but our meetings, which are going to be on Mondays at 7.30, uh, they'll be here for. So. Is Kate back on campus? Uh, no, no, oh, okay. they're still at home. They're still international, so yeah. Yeah, it's a big difference in the time zone. For, mm -hmm. for yeah, we, yeah, shows that we have members on campus and off. I was off campus last semester and yeah, it's all working out so far. So don't worry if you're off campus. Uh, Joe? Um, hi, I'm Joe. This is my second semester as a freshman and I'm majoring in forestry. Hi, I'm JP. I'm also a freshman. It's my second semester with the club and I'm majoring in FYE, but I'm planning on going into civil engineering. And he, him are my pronouns. Hi, I'm Kylie. My major, I'm a freshman majoring in pre-medicine and my pronouns are she, her. Hey, I'm also JP. I'm the Facebook manager and I'm a sophomore in mechanical engineering and my pronouns are he and him. Yeah, that's our newly appointed media coordination team. We've almost doubled our roster of officers since last semester, so hopefully that'll, uh, we can do some cool new things with that. Uh, this is our advisor, Dr. Ann. Uh, is she here right now? I don't think she is. Yeah, no, I don't think she is. Um, she basically is our teaching uh, liaison. She helped start the club back like two, two and a half years ago. Um, she's like very good at uh, the technical skills, the ins and outs of managing this kind of organization. So if you ever have a question about like something technical, like maybe you don't know how to solder and need just a couple quick tips that or something that maybe we can't answer, um, Dr. Ann might be a good person to go to. She's a teacher in uh, the medical engineer or medical uh, mechanical engineering technologies division, I believe, or polytech, my bad. Um, and yeah, she's very good, uh, comes to a few of our meetings throughout the semester, but she's always on call with the officers. And yeah, she's good if you ever need a hand to reach out to. So, what is Adapted Toys for Children? I feel like I've said this a million times for so many people, so hopefully I've gotten good at it. We are a nonprofit club dedicated to serving the children um, with disabilities community of West Lafayette. And um, we've branched out to a few other people through, uh, throughout the US and in some cases around the world uh, for different tips, for different donation opportunities. And basically what we do is we take in standard toys that you'd find on the market that might not be suitable for kids with certain disabilities and we um, adapt them, to, hence the name, uh, to better suit those children. So that is kind of our mission statement. And yeah, who do we donate these toys to? That would be our community partner, Glass. So if you ever hear me uh, refer to something called Glass, that is the local school, uh, which is just about like a 10 minute drive away, uh, which, ha uh, which kind of teaches over 3,000 students with varying disabilities in a wide age range, 
So it's a great opportunity to donate a lot of different types of toys. They were our original goal to donate to when we first uh, started this organization. And so, yeah, they've been a great uh, partner. We had the teacher who, donate, who we donate to come in last semester and actually give a presentation about the, the specific kids there and what their specific disabilities can be. Um, and if you want to see that, you can see that on our YouTube channel, uh, uh, Adapted Toys to Children. So, yeah. So what exactly do we do in terms of adapting toys? Like how, what does that look like and what are our more specific duties? Um, so the goal is to make these toys more accessible to children with disabilities. I will kind of go into that later on. Um, the school we visit uh, is mainly, it's mainly due to, it's mainly in order to like get a better idea of like how to make this, make our process the best that it can be sort of uh, sort of establish that bond with the end user, the end children. Um, it's very good to kind of see that, but of course, for obvious reasons, we won't be doing that this semester because of COVID. It's not safe to visit the school at the moment, but hopefully we'll be able to reach out in other ways. We're still definitely in contact with them. Uh, we hear a lot of feedback from the teacher and how well the toys are received, all the little personal attachments that they form with like certain toys that we donate to, like the kids love this little dog and, uh, light up dance toy that we gave right there. They really love those toys. That was last year. And uh, this is us visiting them and talking with the teacher about the toys uh, about a year ago. We also receive pre-adapted toys from the school that are broken and we will fix them up for them. I think I have an example of that later in the slides, but yeah, so we not only adapt for the good toys, but we can all, we also act kind of as a repair shop in some cases. And it's also a good opportunity to learn about what's already out there on the market in terms of toys that are already made for these types of children. Um, let's see, we also organize technical workshops for, P, uh, for different Purdue students around campus. We've hosted a soldering workshop, which got around an attendance of 30 members. It was a good way to kind of expand our reach, uh, teach members uh, a value, like a skill that we actually use when adapting toys. So it was good as a service to lots of Purdue students and just a good thing to help teach members who didn't know the skill already. And on top of that, we provide outreach and an additional, re additional resource for families in this community. So we, do our, we try to do as much research as we can and uh, sort of provide as many services as we can to uh, these families. All right, why do we do this? Why do we adapt toys in the first place? Well, as you can imagine, uh, standard toys might not necessarily suit a, a child with say dexterity issues. Say um, I don't have certain dexterity in my fingers. Um, I'm unable to press tiny buttons on any kind of toy. Uh, so what we would do in that scenario is we would um, attach like an aux port of sorts to the toy, wire it into all the toys features and connect that uh, aux port to uh, this type of button. It's basically a button that's about, I want to say uh, like a half a foot wide, very easy to uh, press down on and it still accesses all the toys features. Um, however, in these cases, they are extremely expensive. What's already on the market for these children um, are very expensive options, $50 up just for like some very simple, like what are usually counting toys, dancing toys, singing, like it's nothing, it's nothing revolutionary, nothing worth $50. It's only specialized. So what we try to do is just provide a free alternative to these really, really expensive options. And we have our own ways of making uh, the actual adaptations, like the buttons, and we're just trying to make the process as cheap as possible for them. This is some of our work. As I mentioned, that standard button attachment, as you can see right here, uh, you kind of have uh, some, you have that aux port right there connecting to the large button. It still accesses all of the dog's uh, features. And yeah, you have an aux port up here. It's, that's kind of what a lot of our work ends up being is if we get a toy with small buttons, a light up and dance toy, usually what we will do is we will uh, connect an aux port to it and um, kind of make it easier for children with physical impediments. Uh, there are other things that we try to do though. So for example, uh, we, were, we actually removed a feature in this case a, of a pullback car. The reason for that being is we got these toys as a donation and uh, we figured, okay, what could go wrong with this toy? So we thought of, say, kids playing with the toy car on the floor, 
and the toy car just kind of rolls off and because of the pullback feature they didn't mean for it to happen and if you guys have ever paid with the pullback car you know they can go really far so if it goes out of your reach and you're not necessarily able to move your lower limbs uh, you're unable to go and get it. Like if you're confined to a wheelchair, that's it. You need to have someone else go and get it for you. So uh, we removed those features in this case uh, as kind of a, um, a workaround to the feature itself. And now it's just another toy car, which is which should be suitable. Uh, we still have these actually in the works. So if anyone wants to take up the rest of those this semester, that would be very appreciated. We design replacement parts for broken components. This was a ball popper bottom that uh, broke, like the base broke. So we had to um, replace it. And this is kind of a CAD file. We are still waiting to get access to a 3D printing lab to actually uh, print it up, but that is the status of that. And this is one of the toys that we got from the school. It's just a little fan. Uh, it was already adapted to connect to one of the large buttons. So we were able to fix that up for them. All right, how can you get involved this semester? Uh, uh, current members already know this. We have three groups. And this was, this was mainly due to the pandemic. We had to kind of get creative with how we adapted toys this semester. So this is the virtual toy planning group. Uh, this is particularly meant for or, uh, like distance students. Any students can really join this if they want though. Um, but it's kind of just for so students who are, not, who are not on campus can kind of get that uh, idea of how we adapt toys. Um, so what we will do here is we will research a specific toy. And in this case, we actually had the toy on us. So we were able to actually open it up, look on the inside of it. And um, we were able to plan an adaptation and actually write down instructions on how to properly adapt that toy, like what we would do to it. And then we're planning on sending out those instructions to a family who contacted us with this specific toy. So the goal here is to um, kind of branch out and allow these parents to actually do their own adaptations from home. Uh, again, it's open to all students. I said that thing about off campus students before, but really it's open to everyone. And yeah, it's just kind of meant to provide the best option for those who like to focus on children with disabilities. Um, but yeah, that's basically this option right here. Uh, and we try to go through materials, general tips, a step-by-step -step process, um, and yeah. For, all right, so this is the hands-on toy adapting. This is most, this is the closest to what we would typically do in a semester had the pandemic not happened. Um, we, in this case, we will send you a toy or we'll hand off a toy and a small toolkit for you to take home. So that way you can make small adaptations to the toy from home. We're not gonna give you like a soldering iron or like uh, any sharp blades or anything that would be like dangerous at home, but mainly just screwdriver sets um, and uh, other, th other small tools just to kind of uh, make very minor adaptations from home and sort of plan out how we are going to adapt that toy uh, in the future once we can uh, meet back up again. So how it works is we give you the toy and then during meetings, uh, an officer will run this group. I believe that will be me this semester. So I will kind of give you tips uh, how to on um, what like what would probably be best to adapt that toy and how you should go about doing it. Um, last semester we had about um, I want to say about over 10 over 10 people in this group. Uh, so a bunch of different toys being taken home and we got those back uh, last semester and a lot of different options. And now we have a much more clear idea of what we're going to do. So right now I'm working with one of our members to actually complete those adaptations really quickly. Like um, we can knock a bunch of those out since they're mostly done because, because of this group. Um, and yeah, on top of that, each member can, each member in this group can sign up to meet one-on-one -on -one with an officer to get more personalized feedback and advice on the toy. So say you're just not quite getting it, say you're having a problem with the toy itself and you kind of want someone there to work on it with you, you can sign up to meet with the officer um, outside of meetings and they can kind of uh, give it their all and uh, sort of figure it out right there. So you kind of have a data sheet right here of some of the adaptations and toys. It's much longer than this, obviously, but uh, yeah. And this is one of the toys that we sent home last semester. And finally, we have the button project. Now this is more mostly uh, 3D modeling and design at this point. So if you really love 3D printing, this is probably the project for you. Um, 
this is basically, we are developing our own button. That's basically it. I mentioned the button adaptation before. It's a very common adaptation. Um, we're probably gonna be learning more about it this semester. But basically, uh, we are designing our own 3D button to send to Glass and hopefully other parents because currently these on the market are like $30 and we can sell and we can give them away for free. Uh, just at the cost of our own time with designing one and some 3D printing material, which uh, engineering students should get for free. So we should have access to free material if people are willing to sort of donate their 3D printing filament. Uh, technical difficulties, hopefully that'll work out in a sec. Um, open all students, again, uh, if you like 3D printing, this is for you. And yeah, uh, hopefully we'll get into the actual printing this semester once the designs are done. We're ordering components and other things. Uh, we'll get more into that once we actually split off into groups by next meeting. All right, so um, I'm just going to give a quick break right here. Uh, before I go any further, because I know that was kind of a lot of information. I was jumping around a bit. And I know I said quick question break. It might be a good time to figure out what is up with my audio at the moment. Time commitment. Yeah. Okay. Um, basically, it's we don't ask, we don't ask for much in terms of time commitment. You're not required to meet every single week. Uh, we would prefer that you do. Uh, we would prefer that you can attend as many meetings as you can. Um, but basically, we will meet once, once. So once a week, every Monday at 730 for about an hour or so, uh, we'll split up into groups, work on whatever project we can, and then um, just kind of rinse and repeat. We're pretty, we're pretty lenient with attendance, but uh, yeah, that's basically the time commitment. And pretty much you, you commit as much time as you want to each week. Uh, like the, the, the weekly meetings is pretty much all that we kind of ask from each one. So it's about an hour and a half a week at most. Um, but if you want to leave early, you can also do that. Or if you want to skip a week because you got exams, that's also all good. Yeah, totally understandable. Um, yeah, we have a couple officers who couldn't make it this week because of reasons. Also, yay, my audio works now. Um, I have access to the Epics Lab and I'm pretty sure they have soldering irons and all. Would you want team members to help with that? Um, that's a good question. Um, we do have soldering irons on us. Uh, like we, we do have a good amount of tools. Um, trying to think of how to word this. We have a good amount of tools on us in terms of drills, uh, some minor uh, blades and um, soldering irons themselves. We have little kits. Um, currently we, we would normally have access to a lab for our normal meetings, but since we can't have meetings in person at the moment, uh, we don't currently have access to labs. The reason I mentioned, uh, I am currently working with a, with a member right now to get access to a lab uh, in order to kind of finish up a couple of toys that we were working on last semester. But besides that, I don't think we need any specific tools or labs right now, unless I'm missing something, if anyone can think of something. I think it could be useful if there are students in EPICS who know how to solder and have access to the labs and, you know, they virtually meet with you or in person, just go over what their plans are and then you can maybe give them okay to solder on their own as another option. That's true. I mean, yeah, if you have the, if you have the access, that's a good point. If you have access to these tools and the ability to make these heavy adaptations on your own, um, we can work through that on a case-by-case -case basis. Uh, we're not going to give you a soldering iron to take home because safety, um, but we uh, that can definitely be worked out. If you have access to labs on your own and it's safe to do so, then by all means. But we would have to, I imagine that by that point, we, we'd have to have like a pretty solid plan uh, if you're going to like make a permanent change to a toy. Like we'd want to like know specifically which wires are you going to solder? What's your plan? Have you thought all this through? But yeah. I think it's a great resource to have. New additions. So this is kind of what we didn't do last semester, but based on some feedback we got from team members, we learned that um, we kind of had a good amount of dead space once we uh, actually split off into groups. Like we would find that we would split off into groups, complete our task pretty early. And then before I reconvene from the breakout rooms uh, through Zoom, uh, we kind of just have like a good amount of awkward silence. 
So we're going to kind of cut back on that a little bit while still remaining productive. And we're, and I think the way to work around that is to try to have these weekly learning sessions. Um, this is sort of meant to help newer members and some current members who um, might need help with certain ins and outs of actually adapting a specific toy. Um, for example, like certain members don't know anything about circuits, like even analyzing them, that's totally fine. Um, we can help you work through that. Um, we, some newer members might not know what to look for when adapting toys. We're going, we can help you work through that too. Um, these are just kind of like the, the idea behind these, um, they're still pretty, they're still experimental in theory. Um, they're about like 20 minutes. You don't have to necessarily put your all into paying attention if you want to work on your toy or something or your 3D CAD model on your own. Uh, while this is going on, that's totally fine. Just, uh, yeah, we just wanted to provide it as an option for, um, for members as a way to kind of get everyone off on a good, on a good leg with, um, with adapting their toys and making the most use of our time. So things to look forward to aside from these standard meetings are we plan to have guest speakers this semester. We have a few ideas. We're going to start reaching out to people uh, soon. We hope to have a virtual workshop. Uh, older members might recognize this from last semester when we said we wanted to have a workshop but didn't end up having one. Uh, we do hope to actually put one together this semester, um, kind of like what I said about the soldering workshop to all Purdue students. We hope to have another one. This would be like a more in-depth thing um, where we kind of open it up to everyone on campus and focus on a very specific uh, technical, technical process that would, that would tie into our own work in this club. And we hope to have social events. Last night or last year, we had a um, a movie night, which was kind of on theme with the history of the. Um, it was a documentary called Crip Camp, and it was about like the history of uh, of the passing of various uh, various law uh, various bills with pertaining to the community with disabilities. But yeah, it was it was nice to learn the history about um, the community itself, and we hope to have more things like that in the future. Um, if anyone has any ideas for a social event they'd like to do, you're welcome to pitch that in some of our, uh, in our feedback forms we have at the end of every meeting. And yeah, for future semesters, I just want to remind everyone, if you're here because you love working with children, um, we're going to try and do something like that as much as we can this semester. But in the future, we hope to have school visits where you can actually go and visit with the children, um, for, form those bonds, learn from them, um, and yeah, just get closer with the people we're working there to help. And of course, um, for those who are stuck at home, uh, we do hope to have everyone back on campus at some point, get, our, get all of our members in a room together and just kind of go crazy on the toys that we've been holding back on in terms of uh, just the hands-on toy adapting. All right, so again, uh, officially our weekly meeting times are Mondays at 7.30, um, just for about an hour. These will be done via Zoom, just like they are right now. I will send everyone a link in my weekly emails. In those emails, there will be any updates that occur outside of, outside of the meetings, in meetings, um, recaps, a recording of the meeting. If you'll notice, I'm recording the call out right now, so this will be up on YouTube if you'd like to go over any other information. And yeah, again, we're flexible with attendance. Come when you can. Um, if you have a specific goal in mind, we prefer you like, you know, work to it as much as you can. And yeah, so, oh, this is a part, I chose this is a part I forgot to take out. This is, um, I retooled this from last semester, but uh, that starter presentation you can kind of ignore. We will be having something similar to it. Um, but yeah, the gist of it is next week, we will be um, giving one of those weekly learning sessions that I mentioned, as well as uh, beginning our subgroup work. Um, and if you want to know how to join a subgroup, you can do that via our member survey. So we're kind of nearing the end now. Um, but basically, if you would like to become a member, uh, scan that uh, barcode over on the side there. If you'd like to join the group, me scan that barcode. Um, if you can't scan barcodes, fill out the links. And our social media is up in the top left if you'd like to check out those. But yeah, I will open it up to questions as well while I'm letting people do that. So does anyone have any questions? Oh. Did you want to mention t-shirts at all? Oh, yeah. Yeah, sorry. Joe mentioned that before, too. I should have said that. Uh, uh, I'll get to your question in one second, Um, 
But yeah, so one thing that we did over the break was we encouraged members to submit uh, t-shirt designs uh, because as of yet we, or as of now, we have yet to develop our own club t-shirt. So we had a few members submit, um, submit designs. We have a total of five that officers are gonna choose from right now. And so we'll be announcing those pretty soon. Um, if you'd like to submit a, a shirt design, if you'd like to submit a shirt design, um, you're still able to just let me know so we know to wait. Otherwise we're gonna kind of go ahead with the decision process pretty soon. But again, if you'd like to submit something, just let me know as soon as you can. And so, yeah, uh, at the end of every semester or at the end of every week, we're gonna have a, um, a feedback survey similar to this one where you can uh, put in anything that you think we could be doing better, what group you're a part in, what you enjoy, what you don't. Uh, we like to get as much feedback as we can so that we can you know, improve our, improve our meetings. And yeah, but this one is more important. If you want to become a member, please fill out this form if you can. And if you can't fill out the form for whatever reason, let me know. But yeah, um, that's pretty much it. Um, if you are not interested in joining the club, shoot us an email and let us know why. We'd love to hear any feedback. Um, that's pretty much it for the call out though. So thank you all for coming out. Uh, we're gonna stick around for a few minutes, the officers to kind of talk. Um, but if you have any questions, you're welcome to stick around too and ask. But thank you guys for coming out. This is a really good turnout.